Hi there everybody, this is Slick from Super Slick Gaming and welcome to my channel. This is a brand new channel as you guys can see and it has gaming in mind. So my idea with the channel is it's just to have a good time and just share the content I create because I'm an avid gamer, I enjoy playing my games on my own time and I would just like to share the experience with everybody out there. Um, I am new to the old YouTube scene so if you guys hear me stumble a bit um, or stutter just bear with me I'm sure it will get better as I get used to speaking through a mic and making these recordings so I've decided on playing Elden Ring as my first game as it's a challenging game and it's a bit open world and there's a ton to do in this game itself and I know it's difficult I've played Dark Souls -y type games in the past and there's a lot of challenges involved with this game and a lot of dying to come in my future but that's just part of the experience and hopefully it makes for enjoying watching experience for you guys as well. So um, I'm going to get cracking into the game now, create a new character and we can take it from there. I have played the game about an hour or so just to get the idea of the key bindings and movements and how the game works itself. Uh, so I haven't gone too far in the game itself as it's about an hour or two maybe max. So I wanted to keep the game fresh for myself and obviously so I experienced the things as you guys experienced it alongside me. So I'm going to start the new game now, create a character and we can take it from there. And just also apologies if uh, you hear some background noise, I do have a sun in the background here and also I have some dogs and stuff that might be barking on the outside. So it's unfortunately nothing I can do about that as I don't have a studio just of yet. Hopefully in the future, in a few years from now, if the channel does grow, I might be looking at upgrading and just making the experience better for the users. But alright, back to Elden Ring. So. I've played uh, that first hour or two of the warrior. I like the dual wieldingness uh, and the two swords of the character. The only downside is, is you pretty much cannot block because you're running two swords and don't have a shield. So it's more orientated around moving around enemies instead of tanking them and taking damage. So movement is a key factor of the character. I think I'm going to stick with him again because I did like the, the fastness of his melee attacks and how quick he can get out of the way. So it's a bit of a high risk, high reward with this character. Extremely quick damage, but also quite squishy and can't block. But I do like the warrior, so I think I'm going to go ahead and play with the warrior again. I'm going to take a male character, and it's just inside my name right here. Okay, um, let's, I'm going to move it to mature because I'm not the youngest lad anymore. I'm not very young. I think keepsake itself, I'm going to go for a little bit more HP, that always helps quite a bit, um, especially in the beginning of the game itself. I can customize the face and stuff for the character, but I'm not going to go into deep of that, I want to dive into the game itself. So let's finish up the character and let's click OK. I'm also going to try my best not to speak through the storylines and character dialogue so you guys can also have a good listen to what the storyline's like and experience the story itself as well. The fallen leaves tell a story. Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, 
demigods all claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. Their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Ogmir, the all knowing. again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. All right, so that's pretty much the story. Uh, we were resurrected as a tarnished, and now we're getting chucked into the land of Elden Ring to try and become an Elden Lord. So yes, here we go. This is the start of many a dying. And for people wondering what these little ghosts are, if you haven't seen Elden Ring yet, these are other players. You sort of get a glimpse of what they do um, alongside you. You can also leave messages with this eye on this ground like you can see here. So, yeah, this is pretty much messages players have left for us with this item that we're picking up here, the Tarnished Wizened Finger. And if I go into my inventory, with the inventory menu, you can browse items you're carrying, drop them on the ground, or throw them away. You can also use tools from the inventory menu. That's the item we just picked up, used to write messages to other worlds. So that's how we can leave messages for other players if we really want to. Some of this stuff's quite hilarious that people leave. And um, it's actually quite interesting. In here you get your equipment menu. With equipment menu you can equip ornaments, arrows, bolts, armor, talismans and items. You can equip up to three ornaments each to, uh, to your left and right hands. The actions each or ornament performs will vary based on which hand is wielding it. So this is pretty much where you can equip like all your swords, shields, armor and so forth. Um, when I did my hour playthrough I never touched uh, the shield. Like never. I like the two swords. I suppose it will have its uses but I don't know I'm a bit of a hasty fellow and I think that's my downfall in these games. I rush him a bit and that tends to lead to a lot of time. But yeah this is the world of Elden Ring. This is pretty much where you start. You can read other players comments first off right. I've explored that side. There is nothing there. It's a bit of a troll message. 
we'll be heading down here now and then down here you like sort of face a boss I've seen players actually kill this boss which is very impressive uh, I haven't even gotten close likely strong foe ahead visions of disaster it probably means disaster but okay so this is where you face your first boss if you do die that's probably what they actually want but some people have beaten it as I said ow and almost insta death that's insta death for me that was absolutely terrible trash gamer I could have at least done a little bit better than I suppose and I think there's a small story but coming up now Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Alright, and this is pretty much actually where the game starts. Uh, Flask of Scrimmages and Tears, that is used to uh, recover health. And that is um, used to recover like FP, it's magic points. I don't exactly know what FP stands for. So down here to the right hand side, we've got a bit of a tutorial section. Or you can head straight through the door and actually just start the game. But I do know there's an item up there that I can't remember what it is but I actually want it so I think I'll probably be running down to the tutorial and get through this as quick as possible I'll be trying to actually get the videos to about 35 to 40 minutes around about in that mark uh, with this playthrough of Elden Ring I don't want a lot of sort of stick on to the linear storyline I actually want to explore a bit and show the people the open world Resting at the site of grace will restore your HP and FP and cleanse any status ailments. It will also refill your sacred flasks. However, most enemies you've defeated will be revived. You can find sites of grace by going where light converges. These explanations are acquired in the form of info items and can be accessed from the inventory at all times. Right, so this is pretty much our resting area. So if you want to restore health, get your flasks back and so forth. And um, yeah, so this is pretty much like resting areas where you can just recover your health and so forth. As you can see, I took a knock with the fall there. Once I rest, health will be recovered. And I can just stand up because I can't upgrade yet. You also use these to upgrade your character a little bit late in the game. So as I said, I just want to get through this tutorial section so we can get to the open world and then the game can actually start. These enemies are, are cakewalk, they walk in the park. 
Guarding. Use an ornament in your left hand or both hands to guard against incoming attacks. Guarding is especially effective when done with a shield. Guarding consumes stamina. If your stamina runs out, your stance will be broken. Dodging. You can avoid enemy attacks with a dodge or roll or backstep. Both of these actions consume stamina. Alright, yeah, as I said, I want to explore but show the people the world of Elden Ring and take my time progressing through these games. I want to try and drop about three, well, the goal is to try and drop about three to four videos uh, once a week and try to keep it like a regular thing. Um, just to keep the channel moving and to keep people watching. Wielding ornaments. Each hand can be equipped with up to three ornaments, allowing you to toggle between them. Ornaments can also be two-handed, making attacks more difficult to repel with shields and boosting effective strength by 50%. Yeah, it looks easy in the beginning, guys, but as I said, um, the hour, hour and a half I've seen, it's actually extremely tough. I find it difficult at least, maybe I'm just a bad gamer, but <laughs> uh, I w I'm going to die a lot. Um, I'll be updating my death counter every time I die. From now on forward, I don't think I'm going to be updating it for that first boss because 99% of people fail with it. Ornaments have special abilities called skills. Skills are highly varied and range from powerful attacks to temporary effects. Using skills consumes FP. So that would be this sweeping attack I've got. Um, you can see it used a little bit of the blue count uh, at the top there. That's pretty much mono. Crouch to make it harder for enemies to discover you, especially effective in tall grass. Attacking an enemy that hasn't noticed you will cause more damage than usual. Alright, so sneaky sneak. Get behind the enemy. And then sneak attack. Very effective, especially against very tough enemies. But these little guys, I don't really care about much. You can pretty much just run through them and just just slaughter them. Stance breaking. Some attacks may break an enemy's stance, giving you a chance to perform a critical hit. Charge attacks and jump attacks make it particularly easy to break an enemy's stance. Hiya! So that's jumping attacks, breaks enemy stances a bit quicker. Stakes of Marika. Upon dying you'll be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. However, if there's a stake of Marika near where you died, you could choose to be revived there instead. Alright, this is pretty much like the first introductory boss. Can't really remember how tough this oak was, but we'll see. Guard counters. You can perform a counter attack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. Guard counters make it easy to break enemy stones. Shift and left click immediately after blocking an attack to guard counter. Ow. Okay, he doesn't need that hard. He also takes quite a quite a lot of damage because he's um, two-handing it, and that's the end of it. That's a bit too easy, very easy. The first enemy to foul. Nothing. It doesn't give us anything. It's just a little bit more of introductory on boss fights and stuff like that. So let's head forward. Let's keep on moving. All right, and that's the item I was talking about. So this is where we start started just down there and then from here on after we go through that door the real game starts okay we only get the emote right jump down and let's get the game started and the proper open world game Right, nothing here much to see. Just a recite an item. Might as well take a rest, fill up the HP quickly.
Try jumping off. Cooperative multiplayer. Use tarnish with a furled finger to write a gold summon sign. Cooperative multiplayer will begin once you've been summoned to other players' world. You will take the role of an ally, a furled finger, and your objective is to defeat the area boss. The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the summoner of the host of fingers. So the host of fingers is the guy that summons you to the world. If he dies, then the mission's over, and obviously if you die, you just return back to your other world. Let's have a look at that item quickly, and that will be a multiplayer slot. With the multiplayer menu, you can use various multiplayer items. If you set a group password, you'll be more likely to see messages, summon sides, blood stains, phantoms, and so on from others using the same password. If you set a multiplayer password, you'll only be matched with other players using the same password from most multiplayer features. However, multiplayer passwords do not apply to invasion multiplayer. All right, we picked up this item. This is the Tarnish Fruled Finger. You can leave a gold summon sign to play cooperative multiplayer. The sign will appear in other players' worlds and allow them to summon you as a fooled finger from cooperative multiplayer. Multiplayer begins once you are summoned. Your objective is to defeat the area boss. If you leave a second summon sign, the older sign will vanish. Alright. I actually enjoy this game uh, on the sense that it sort of... It's a lot more multiplayer based than what the Dark Souls genre was. Like Dark Souls, you did play multiplayer, but I feel this game, they actually made it a little bit more important to do the multiplayer, because some of these bosses are extremely difficult, so... You also, when you do uh, play a multiplayer game and you go and you are summoned by other player, and you do finish the boss, then you actually get rewarded with the item that you can call other players to your will to help you out. So they, I have a bit more emphasis on trying to get the multiplayer going for like a Dark souls type game, which I actually really appreciate. And this is Elden Ring. Welcome to the gorgeous world of Elden Ring. So much to explore, so much to do, so many places to go, and the best thing is, is the choice is yours. You can do whatever you want in whatever order you want, and I think the world's absolutely gorgeous, although that uh, Elden Ring is not, you know, massively focused on graphics and tense of games and more, more gameplay. I still think it is a very nice looking world to look at. So many different biomes and places that look so much different than the rest and I think it's an absolutely gorgeous game. I don't have to... Uh, Alright, the map. Use your map to check your current position as well as the terrain and surrounding structures. You can update your map with new information by finding map fragments at steel stills along the road. You can also use the map to freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Now let's just activate the touch of grace. So if I do die, I start here. Grace e exists to guide the tarnished and lead them along the proper path. Even now, some sites of grace retain the power. The golden rays will guide you along the way. So these golden rays you see sort of points you to the next sites of grace, which will follow you on the main story plot. But as I said, I'm not going to just be running this. I'm going to be moving along, you know, and exploring a bit and leveling up and stuff like that. And just enjoy the game as most as I can. Um, I feel like running the linear storyline on the game itself will just shorten the experience and myself and the people watching will just like sort of miss out on a lot of the game's you know value and everything it brings oh yes tarnished are we come to the lands between for the elden ring hmm? of course you have no shame in it unfortunately for you however you are maidenless, without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me. Vare, take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? 
the golden light that gives life to you tarnish. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Alright, alright dude. So he just pretty much says that I need to follow the light and move on. And then yeah, from there on, the exploring starts. As you guys can see, I am playing the game on uh, PC, it's uh, Mac settings. So hopefully it looks good on the video itself. In every corner in the, of the lands between, you'll find fruits and flowers, mushrooms and butterflies, and various other useful materials. These materials can be used for crafting. And we found a roa fruit. Let's go have a look at roa fruit. Roa fruit, material used for cross, crafting, easily found everywhere in the lands between. Alright, so... There's some more materials here. So these stakes are these these things here summon, are summoning pools. In each area you may find if if effigies or materials, these effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easy to summon other players at these locations as co-op and hostile summoning signs created. With small effigies gather at summoning pools. So this is a bit easier to find players that can help you if I activate that item. You know, it will sort of show me other player signs and stuff. And it's easier to find them around these little icons here. Small golden if key. Send a cooperative summon sign to several nearby summoning pools. If you are summoned, you'll be transported to that summoning pool's location in a host of players' world and multiplayer will begin. Your joint, the objective will be to help those players defeat the area boss. Alright. Alright, so <laughs> I, I, when I play, made, played around in this hour or so, I tried to fight <laughs> this thing. I think I died about 10 times and then I realized, no, this might be, you know, a boss for a different time. I can go try and show you guys how absolutely tough this guy is. I mean, the worst that happened is that I can lose 589 of my upgrade points. But let's see. These are, this oak is extremely tough. The tree seems to Ow. You can actually see, like in two small hits, he can actually just slaughter me. And I'll try my best, but this is just an example of how tough these enemies can actually be in this game. Like this is a special move can actually, if it does clip you, can actually one hit you. And I haven't got, to, I've gotten about halfway to killing him and that's about it. And it's all about patience. A lot of ducking, a lot of movement. And trying to land this one little blow, one little blow at a time. Come on. Ow. And I'm dead. You see, it just takes one little mistake. And he absolutely wrecked you. So, I've tried a few times. I've got about halfway with him. Didn't get close to kill him. So, that's a boss definitely for other, other time. And when I'm leveled up a bit more. Death. Upon dying, you'll be revived at the last site of grace that you visited. You will drop any ruins in your position at the site of your death. If you die again before reclaiming those ruins, they will be lost forever. 
The compass at the top of the screen indicates the direction of the lost ruins. Alright, so pretty much if you die twice in a row without collecting your ruins, your ruins are lost forever. And then you have to start building those ruins up again and from there on. Everywhere on the map you'll also get these animals and stuff that you can pretty much kill and that gives you other crafting ingredients. Very vibrant world. Lots going on, lots to do. So you see I got small beast bones on that one and there's something on the ground here. That's a ruin fragment. And another ruin fragment. So let's have a look. Inventory. Ruin fragments. Material used for crafting. And that's all they say. Found by hunting beasts. And that's the small bone. So I think I'm just going to move on to the next campsite. And then probably call this video quits. This one will be a little bit shorter. A little bit of a boring video. Because this is just mostly tutorial based. The tutorial took 25 minutes of the video itself. And it's also a nice introductory video from a brand new YouTube channel, you know, and brand new game, brand new YouTube channel, brand new content creator, trying my best to deliver some entertaining content going forward. Let's collect whatever's on this annual. Strengthening ornaments. At the smithing table, you can spend ruins and smithing stones to, uh, uh, to strengthen your ornaments. Somewhere in the lands between, you may meet a blacksmith who can make your ornaments even stronger. All right, pick up item. And it gives us a smithing stone. Let's have a look at that. With the smithing menu, you can spend ruins and smithing stones to strengthen your ornaments. You can strengthen your ornaments up to plus three at the smithing table. Somewhere in the lands between your meter blacks will make your ornaments even stronger. All right. See, I need more additional items. So um, this will probably require, let's see. I think it's probably going to require uh, extra smithing stone. Yes, I need two smithing stones. I only have one, so I can't strengthen my swords. Got nothing else except the shield as well. That also requires two, so can't do much there. Let's speak to this chap. You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. All right, he's pretty much the merchant. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every customer counts, after all. Alright, so this is the buying and selling dude in the beginning. With the shop menu, you can spend ruins to purchase various items. You can also sell items for ruins. Each merchant stocks a different variety of items for purchase. Alright, so he recommends the crafting kit, which would be this. This is important, um, so you can craft various stuff um, from stuff to say using in multiplayer and stuff to buff your weapons. So I also feel this is quite an important one. I'm only going to buy that and let's see. A uh, flask of wondrous physique and no to waypoint ruins. Let's take the flask of wondrous physique. Right, that's pretty much all we can craft or, or buy I mean. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. If you have the crafting kit, you can make various items from materials you find. Select item crafting from the main menu and make items. You can learn to craft more items to find in cookbooks. Containers. You will need crack pots and other containers to craft certain items. You will not be able to make more of those items until you have more containers. Container items will run out with use, but containers themselves will remain. 
Alright, let's go take a uh, rest here. Fast travel to sites of grace. Through your map you can instantly travel to any sites of grace you've discovered. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Alright, so if you have a look at the map, map menu. With the map menu you can check your current position and terrain and buildings in surrounding areas. You can also freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Lastly, through the map you can select any site of grace you've discovered and travel there instantaneously. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Alright, so this is pretty much where we started. Uh, as you can see, the scope of the map is absolutely massive. When I played, I only like saw like this much and as we discover more places, you'll see how big it becomes. And we can fast travel by pressing F. We can like travel to the first places where we started and so forth. It's quite handy and convenient to travel along and see everything. Let's see if we rest at the site, if anything specific happens. From what I can see, nothing more. In here you can get spells, memorize spells menu. With the memorize spells menu you can memorize sorceries and incantations. You must have a staff equipped to cast sorceries or sacred seals equipped to cast incantations. Casting sorceries and incantations consumes FP. Your memory slots determine the number of sorceries and incantations you can memorize. You can increase memory slots by obtaining a memory stone. So there's spells and stuff that's going to pop out here throughout time. Not really made for my character. Uh, my character is more the melee sort. I've seen some other people running around with wizards. It also looks very cool. So it's quite a lot of customization and to cater the game towards your playstyle. But that's about it for today guys. Um, or for this episode at least. I'm going to stop the episode right here. Because we're running on like about 36-37 minutes at the moment. This is just pretty much introduction. And uh, just to get a scope of who I am and what I'll be doing in the future. Please, if there's anything uh, you can help me improve on, if the sound is not sounding right or if there's any problems with any of the replays, just please drop a comment down at the comment section and I'll do my best to improve on that. Hopefully in the long scale I can start improving my mic quality and getting a proper desk mic and improving the channel as best as I can going forward. But this is pretty much it guys, if you have uh, enjoyed my first episode and my first introduction as a content creator, please uh, drop a like and subscribe to the channel and it will also just show your continuous support and it will be highly appreciated and also drop a comment so I know where I can improve and what your feedback is on this first little episode. And this is me from Slick and S Super Slick Gaming. I'm out and I hopefully catch you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.